You found it. Your home for the best content on your favorite team, the Fighting Tigers of LSU. Do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, leave your comments below, and be sure to smash that like button. I think this was probably met one or two ways. There was no in between <laughs> with seeing the quote from Wilson Alexander that he posted uh, along with, with the interview uh, from Brian Kelly yesterday and about Harold Perkins moving back inside. And it's a conversation that we are used to having, obviously, because we spent the majority of last offseason having the conversation that Harold Perkins would move inside after the stellar freshman year where he really rushed off the edge and did it in and put up wild numbers, 13 tackles for loss, seven and a half sacks, and did it in limited games, really emerged late in that season. And man, just burst onto the scene in college football. Everyone remembers that Arkansas game, right? It was, I mean, it was it was freakish. He, he was the best player on the field that entire day. And expectation, obviously, sky high for him, and he was going to change positions, and it lasted all of one game. It lasted all of one game in that Florida, in the opener against Florida State, and... From then on, it was, okay, try to find the best position for him to where you can maximize a defense that ultimately ended up being a struggling defense, to, to put it mildly. But you saw him end up really kind of in a, that, that nickel role uh, a good bit, the nickel linebacker role a good bit, played a lot in coverage. And then later in the year after they went to the four down, it, it stabilized for him, right? Um, and anytime they talked about any type of defensive improvement, they talked about, finding the role for Harold Perkins. Enter Blake Baker, and immediately everyone's excited about rush numbers for Harold Perkins because of the aggressive style of defense that Blake Baker likes to call. You saw it on full display at Missouri. Everyone immediately gets excited there. And now you arrive here where Brian Kelly, quote, to the advocate yesterday, he needs to be in the action he needs to be the weak side linebacker. He needs to be in the box. He needs to be active there. That's where he's going to start, and we've got to get him ready for that position. So set it off the jump there. There's probably two ways this was met, either with what are you doing? This is the stupidest thing ever. Awful decision. It didn't work last year. Why should you believe it works this year? Or the other side of the coin, the other side of the spectrum, this is the right move. It's where Harold Perkins belongs. It's where he's going to play at the next level. All of those things. There really was no in between. For me, what it obviously comes down to is do you trust Blake Baker? Because that's the difference here. Okay? It didn't work last year. We know that. Why didn't it work? It didn't work because Harold Perkins got less talented. He's more than capable, more than capable of playing the inside backer position. That's not a question. We all know that. Because the majority of the time, when that guy steps out onto the field, he's the best defensive player on the field, and you could argue the best player in the game on the field. So that lends me to believe it was a development problem, and it was a coaching problem. And when you look at that defense as a whole, it's not so hard to believe. So do you trust Blake Baker? I can't make that decision for you. What I can tell you is I think that you should. Because I think Blake Baker's, and he's proven it, is at least a top three linebacker coach in the entire country. Let alone the work he can do to defensive coordinator. And you have two great examples, recent examples, to show this out. You could start with most recent, with Tyron Hopper at Missouri last year, who's extremely comparable to Harold Perkins in size. So that makes a lot of sense. And... A guy who started his career at Florida, obviously transfers over to Mizzou his senior year last year. He goes down after 10 games, but in those 10 games, was leading Missouri in tackles with 55. You're looking at um, three sacks and six tackles for a loss, all from that position, used him in a bunch of different roles, and ends up being a Butkus finalist. That's, that's development. And then y'all know where I'm going to go with the second example. It's Damone Clark. And it's one thing to look at the numbers that Damone Clark put up at LSU, and we can go through that because I want to compare them because it's 
potentially the greatest testament as to why this, why you, why at least I'm uh, hopeful that this will work out much better this time. But you can look past the numbers with Clark and just remember what he said about working with Blake Baker, his relationship with Blake Baker, how, how much of his development he credited to Blake Baker and how it wasn't just a coach-player relationship there. That's important. But if you want to just look at the numbers in, uh, in Clark's final year at LSU, his senior year, the 2021 season, He's the nation's second leading tackler with 135 tackles. 15 and a half tackles for loss, five and a half sacks. And then you can throw in the coverage numbers too. He had four pass defense and interceptions. He was all over the field. Butkus finalist should have won the award, if we're being honest. So that's two examples we've used, both very recent, one in 2021, one in 2023. Both of them Butkus finalists, both of them able to Beast in an aggressive style defense from the middle of that defense under Blake Baker. Those numbers, though, from Clark, who was a great player in his own right. You know what Harold Perkins did last year when all of us said he was hidden or they were, I mean, they, you know, neutered. People use the word they neutered the talent up out there. You know what his numbers were? He had 75 tackles, which led LSU. 13 tackles for loss, five and a half sacks. Does that sound familiar? Damone Clark, 15 and a half TFLs, five and a half sacks. I get it. Different position, different defense. But the point is, when we all thought Harold Perkins was missing last year, he put up those numbers. So I look at that. And I know what kind of development Blake, Blake Baker brings to the linebacker position. We can look at the type of aggressive attacking style defense that he likes to play and then pair that with the athleticism of Damone Clark. He should be able to feast in that defense in the middle of it. So I look at it and I say, okay, I'm willing to go down this road again. Because I trust the guy in charge more now than I did last season when we were having this conversation. Maybe it doesn't work. And that is that is another side of the coin, I guess you could throw out there. And if it doesn't, you need to find a, a role for him that's not last year, obviously, right? Wilson uh, noted, uh, Brian Kelly noted to the, in the piece to Wilson that that, that position is going to be called the star in Blake Baker's. He could do that. They don't want him to do that. He doesn't need to do that. Like if it, if it, they're going to tell you it has to work. They told you that last year too. When it didn't, they searched for another option. I'm not sure what that option is this year if it doesn't work, but I don't think it should be that, that star role because he just, he impacted the game a lot last year, but it was so much more difficult to the point where earlier we were saying we all thought he was missing and he still put up insane numbers because he's just a freak athlete. But when you look at what LSU was last year defensively, anything, anything that they think is going to help improve that, I'm all for. Even if we saw it a little bit last year and it didn't work, anything you think that's going to help you improve from last year, I am all for 100%. So let's see if it works. And it's it's it shows you to the, just like the, I mean, the draw, obviously, that Harold Perkins has, that this is something everyone's getting bent out of shape about, in a, in a sense, not everybody, I should, shouldn't say, when there are far more pressing issues on LSU's defense that they need to correct going into 2024. Y'all, they're moving offensive linemen to the defensive tackle spot right now, so they have bodies in spring. That's a big problem. That's a bigger problem than does Harold Perkins play inside linebacker. You, what are you going to do in the secondary? You got plenty of bodies, but who's going to step up? That's a bigger problem. But I understand. He's the best player on the defense. He's the guy that can really lead the charge. And I think having him in the middle can work out.
I really do. So they're going to go for it one more time. They start spring one week from today. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Please leave your comments. I love to interact. And be sure to hit the red subscribe button below.